Hello students, my name is Sarwar Begum. I am working as assistant professor in CSC department of RYMEC Engineering College, Ballari. I have work experience of 13 years and my subjects of interest are algorithms, data structures, DBMS, Java, Python and of course digital electronics. In this video, we will be discussing regarding the two types of circuits that is the combinational circuits and uh, sequential logic circuits. I will be covering the more details on combinational logic circuits. So, first let us understand why do we need this combinational logic circuits. Assume that we want to perform the addition of two numbers. We know that in a uh, digital systems we can perform either the addition, subtraction or multiplication. So, this addition is performed with the help of a circuit called as adder. Likewise, whatever tasks we do perform in our digital systems, all of them have been done or have been performed with the help of either the combinational logic circuits or the uh, sequential logic circuits. Let us try to understand how combinational logic circuits are different from sequential logic circuits with the help of an example. You have been asked to realize this expression using the logic gates. So, you already know how to realize this expression using the uh, two level and or logic. So, whenever we are providing any input to one particular circuit, for example, assume that we are giving the input as 0, 0 and 0 and we, we are going to obtain one particular output for this combination of input. So, now assume that I am going to change the values of these inputs to some other things. So, now when I am going to change the value for these three inputs, I am going to get another output which depends only on the present values of input. It means in combinational logic circuits, whenever we are getting any output, the output depends only on the present values of input. It is not going to depend on what was the previous values of input. For example, whenever we are using the calculator, in calculator if I am performing for example, the addition 7 plus 3, I am going to get the answer as 10. Next, if I want to perform for example, 10 plus 2, I am going to get the answer as 12. Obviously, this output, it does not depend on what previous values we have added. This particular output depends only on the present values of inputs. So, we can say that your combinational logic circuits are nothing but the collection of gates which are arranged in some manner so that we are going to perform one particular task and again the output of that particular circuit, it depends only on the present values of input. It does not depend on the previous values of inputs. If we take one more example in order to understand what are sequential circuits. Assume that we are moving in a lift. So, on every floor we are going to get the floor number. So, if we are getting the floor number as 1, so obviously the previous floor number should be 0. So, in this case, we can tell that the floor number is 1 only when we know that the previous floor number is 0. So, that means in sequential circuit, the output depends on present values of inputs as well as previous values of input. So, we can represent a combinational logic circuit with the help of a block diagram. Obviously, this block diagram is going to have some combination of logic gates and this circuit can take multiple inputs. It may have multiple inputs 
and it may generate the multiple outputs. Whereas in case of sequential circuit, as I already said, the output depends on the present values of inputs along with present values of input. I said that it also depends on previous values of inputs. But now the question is, how do we store the previous values of input? So your previous values of inputs will be st uh, stored with the help of a memory element which are called as actually flip-flops regarding which we will be discussing in detail at the end of this particular module. So the output will be given as feedback to a sequential circuit. So a combinational circuits are nothing but the circuits which are the rearrangement of your logic gates where the output of a circuit depends only on the current values of input. Whereas your sequential circuits are the circuits where the output depends on the present values of inputs as well as previous values of input. In order to store the previous values of inputs, we will be making use of the memory elements in your sequential circuits. So in this particular video, we will be discussing regarding what will be the design procedure to design any combinational logic circuit. So as an example to learn what are the design steps in the combinational logic circuits, we are going to understand or we are going to design a logic circuit which is going to convert the BCD code to XS3 code. So let us uh, see how do we design this particular combinational logic circuit. So as I already said, a combinational logic circuit will always perform some particular task. In our example, our circuit will be converting the BCD code to a XS3 code. In order to design any circuit, first you should understand what is the problem statement. So we are asking to convert a BCD code to XS3 code. First you should understand what is the meaning of BCD code and what is the meaning of XS3 code. Okay. So as the name is indicating here, binary coded decimal. So we want to represent the decimal number in the form of binary. When I say decimal number, we know that we want to represent the values from 0 to 9. Okay. So now in order to represent 9, we need maximum of 4 bits. So we can identify that to design this combinational circuit, we need 4 inputs. Why do we need 4 inputs? Because in order to represent 9 in binary representation, we need minimum of 4 bits. So now what is the meaning of XS3 code? A XS3 code is nothing but whatever value is given, for that we have to add plus 3. For example, if I have a number as 0, so this is the BCD code, 0 representation in binary. So now I want to convert this into XS3. In order to convert this into XS3, I have to add plus 3. So for 0, if I add plus 3, I am going to get the value as 3. So what will be the uh, XS3 representation of uh, 0 will be 0, 0, 1, 1. That is for this we are adding 3. When we add 3, I am go going to get the answer as 3. Then we have to represent again 3 in the binary representation. So now let us see how do we uh, design this circuit by following the steps. So the first step in the design of any uh, combinational logic circuit is we have to identify the number of inputs, then we have to identify the 
number of outputs. As I already said, the number of inputs will be how many here? 4 as we want to represent 9 in binary. In order to represent 9 in binary, we need minimum of 4 bits. So, uh, after identifying the number of inputs, we have to assign the symbols for them. I am going to take the input names for this particular design as A, B, C, D. So, once I have decided the number of inputs, now I have to identify how many outputs I need. So, the maximum number what we had in our input representation is 9. For 9, if I add 3, that is to convert 9 into x is 3, I have to add 3, then I am going to get the answer as 12. So, again to represent 12 in binary, I need obviously 4 bits. So, the number of outputs will also be 4 in this case. So, I am going to take the uh, output names as w, x, y, z. So, once we have identified the number of inputs and outputs and assigned the symbols for them, now I have to obtain the truth table in order to establish the relationship between the input variables and output variables. So, first I have to fill the input columns. So, to represent BCD code, I have to write the uh, rows from 0 to 9 in binary representation. So, the binary representation of 0 will be 0, binary representation of 1, then we have 2, then we have 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, then finally the last entry in the input row will be 9. So, once I have got the number of rows in my input variables, now I have to fill the output row for each combination of input. So, now to convert this 0 into x is 3, I have to add plus 3. So, that means 0 will become 3. So, what will be the binary representation of 3? 0, 0, 1, 1. Then, a second row. For this 1, I have to add plus 3. So, 1 plus 3 will become 4. So, what will be the binary representation of 4? It will be 0, 1, 0, 0. So, likewise, your next row is 2. For 2, I have to add again plus 3. So, it will become 5. What is the binary representation of 5? 0, 1, 0, 1. So, likewise, I have to complete the table by adding plus 3 for each row combination. So, 0, 1, 0, 1, after this we are going to get 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, triple 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, then we get 1, 0, 0, 1, this is 9, then after this we have, we will get 10, 1, 0, 1, 0, then we get 11, 1, 0, 1, 1, then we are going to get 12, 1, 1, 0, 0. So, now our truth table is ready. Once the truth table is ready, I have to obtain the simplified Boolean expression for each output variable. So, as we have 4 output variables, I have to construct 4 K maps and even we have 4 inputs, I have to construct a 4 variable K map already in the previous uh, videos you might have learned how to construct a four variable k map so let us try to construct a four variable k map so i have the input variables as a bar b bar a bar b a b a b bar then here we'll be having c bar d bar C bar D, C D, C D bar and fill the mean terms 0, 1, 2, 3. I hope already you know 
what is the reason for filling this in this way 4, 5, 6, 7, then we fill 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So, here the first point to notice is our K map is having 4 variable K map is having the uh, mean terms from 0 to 15, but our truth table is having the values only up to 9. So, our first step will be whatever rows are not available in our truth table we need to fill them with the don't care condition. So, I have to fill it from 10. So, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 will be filled with a uh, don't care condition. Once the don't care conditions are filled, now I am finding out the simplified equation for the variable or the output variable w. So, identify the one entries in this particular row. To make it easy, I am going to write it as the decimal representation of these numbers so that it will become easy for me to fill the uh, K map. So, if you observe for W, we have the one entries for 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So, fill 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and fill the remaining entries with 0. So, once this is ready, so now I have to make the groups. So, already in the previous videos you might have learned how to form the groups in the K-map. If you observe, we can put this one in an octet. So, I am going to group this as octet. Okay. So, for this particular octet, I have to find out uh, what will be the expression. So, to find out the expression, I have to see here B and B bar will go. I will be left out with what here? A. And all these C and C, uh, C, C and D variables will be uh, cancelled. You might be knowing the reasoning behind this. Uh, from the previous videos. I am not going to talk much about those things in this video. So, what will be our next group? If, if you observe, we can make one more group as this one, the maximum group. So, I have to again include in a quad. So, for this quad, what is the variable I am getting? This A and A bar will go. I am left out with B and along with this C and C bar will go. I am left out with D. So, I am going to get the mean term as BD and the next group will be this squad. So, in this squad I am going to get again B will be as it is and here uh, D and D bar will go. So, I am left out with what here BC. So, we have got the simplified equation for our first output variable. So, in a similar way, I have to construct or I have to determine the simplified equation for three more variables. So, as I told in the previous case, first fill the don't care condition in the entries from 10 to 15, then identify the one entries for variable x. So, you can see the one entry is there for 1, 2, 3, 4 and 9. 1, 2, 3, 4 and 9. So, fill the remaining entries with 0. So, now I have to make the groups. So, you can see I can make this and this 
as one quad. So, for this particular quad, I am going to get the uh, equation as, so here, A, A bar will go, so we are left out with B bar. Then on this side, C, C bar will go, I am left out with here D. So, the minimizer mean term for that particular quad will be B bar D plus, I have to make one more, this one is left out. So, I can make this as either a pair or a quad. So, as we already know that, we have to always try to include any one into a largest group possible. So, I am going to make this again as a quad. For this quad again we are getting B bar and we will be getting for these two C. B bar D plus B bar C. Then here we are left out with one more one. So, it is not possible to include this one into a quad, so we will go with a pair. So, for this particular pair, I am getting the answer as A and A bar will go. So, we are left out with B, C bar, D bar. Let us try to find out the simplified equation for the next output variable that is for y. So, again, again identify the one entries for y column. So, you can see there is a one entry for 0, 3, 4, 0, 3, 4. Then after 4, we have a entry, one entry for 7 and 8. So, do the one entry for 7 and I have to do the one entry for 8, then for this 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, make the don't care condition. So, now the remaining entry should be filled with 0. So, again now we have to try to group the ones in such a way that they are included in the maximum group. You can see, I can group these three ones into one octet. And for this A and B will go off, they are left out with C bar, D bar plus similarly these two ones can be grouped into one more uh, quad, sorry, one more quad. So, we are going to get the answer as C D here. So, similarly we need to find out the minimum expression for the next output variable, the next output variable will be Z, A bar, B bar, A bar, B, A B, A B bar, C bar, D bar, C bar, D, C D, C D bar. So, first make the do not care end, uh, entries 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Then identify the one entries for Z. So, if you observe it is there for 0, 2, 4, 6, 8. I guess for all even numbers 0, 2, 4, 6, 8. Then make the 0 entries in the remaining boxes. So, now if you observe, if you observe we can make 
this as one octet. So, when we make it as a octet by using a rolling method, A and B will go off. In these two columns, uh, C will go off. We are left out with only the one variable that is z is equal to d bar. So, now once we have obtained the minimizer equation for all the output variables, now we have to draw the logic diagram. So, if you observe the Boolean equations, you can find out how many AND gates and how many OR gates are needed if we are using two level AND OR logic. So, you can see here for this I need one AND gate, two, then we have three, four, five, six, seven. We need totally seven AND gates and one, two, three, four, four or five OR gates we need. So, now what we can do? When we are using our two level and or logic, if the number of gates are more, we can reduce the number of gates by building the multi level logic circuits. In order to build the multi level logic circuits, we have to minimize these expressions by using the Boolean algebra, so that we can get some uh, common sub expression in all the output variables. So, if you carefully observe this first equation, so I can keep A as it is, I can take B as common. So, when I take B as common, you are left out with D plus C or we can write even C plus D, both are one and the same. And after that, if I want to take this equation, for this equation, x is equal to, I can take uh, b bar as common. If I take b bar as common, so we are left out with again either d plus c or c plus t plus here we have b. So, now what we can do? This c bar d bar can be written as c plus d whole bar by making use of here a Boolean loss. So, I can write it as c plus d whole bar. So, you can see that in the expression w and in expression x, we are trying to obtain the common sub expression as c plus d. So, similarly, let us try is it possible to obtain the common sub expression for this y also. So, we can see here, we can write again this C d as C plus d whole bar and keep this C d as it is. Why we are doing this is we want to reduce the number of gates, but we want to increase the number of levels in the logic circuit. So, let us try to draw the circuit using this reduced sub expressions. So, the simplest expression available among the four output variables is z is equal to d bar. So, I will start with that particular expression. So, for here z input, I mean sorry z output, we have only a very simple expression d bar. So, I will be getting the output as z here. Once I am done with z, I am going with this. You can start with any one. We are just going in a way that we can simplify our drawing of uh, logic diagram. So, here you can see I have C plus D. So, I want one input from D and one input I am taking it as C. For both of them, I want to use a OR gate. 
okay. Then after that we have C plus D bar, then I want to make use of one not yet. Then we have the next sub expression as C D. So, I am taking again one more input from this only and one input I will take it from C and for both of them I have to make use of a AND gate. Once I get a AND gate, this will be C D. Then for these two I have to make use of my OR gate. So, this is the expression for our output variable y. In a similar way, we have to draw the x, uh, logic circuit for our uh, variable x. So, for variable x, we need b bar. So, I am taking the input as b and it will go through one inverter that will be a b bar, it will become b bar and after that we need C plus D. Here C plus D is available in our first level. So, from the first level I want to take the output. So, I have I will get the next gate in the third level. So, I should get C plus D. C plus D means I am taking the connection from this particular point. Okay. Then C plus D into B bar. I have to make use of one more and gate over here. So, this will become the sub expression b bar into c plus t. Then I have to find out or I have to draw the logic diagram for this sub expression b into c plus d bar. So, b means I have to take the in input from here. Then I have to take c plus d bar. So, c plus d bar is available here. I am taking from this point. Okay. Once I get this, I will be getting one more AND gate. Now, these two should be OR by using a OR gate to get the final output for our expression x. Once we are done with this x, now the left out Boolean expression is for output variable w. For this I need to take the input a and after that we have to take b bar. b bar I can get from this once I get b bar, I need again c plus d. So, I can take c plus d from this, from this link. So, I am extending this. So, we will get b bar into c plus d using a AND gate. Then, this should be odd with a. That is the expression for output variable w. So, now we can observe this logic circuit. If we are using the AND OR logic with two levels, Already I have told you we needed nearly 7 AND gates and more than 4 OR gates. So, now if I see this diagram, we are, we are uh, re requiring less number of gates, but we have multiple levels of logic. Whenever we want to simplify the equation or simplify the logic circuit, we want to decrease the number of gates and increase the number of levels. So, in this video we have learnt about how, what are the different steps in designing a combinational logic circuit. The first step is we have to identify the input 
uh, number of input variables and number of output variables and assign the symbols for them and obtain the second step is obtain the truth table to establish the relationship between the input variables and output variables then simplify the uh, expression for output variables by making use of any of the simplification methods like kmap or map entered variable or queen maklesky method once we get the simplified equation depending on the application we have to reduce the number of gates by increasing the number of levels uh, in the logic circuit thanks for watching the video in the slide uh, i have displayed some of the uh, working exercise for this particular topic thanks for watching the video